But he said, when the Lord, keep you a Bible open to have you out too. I'm coming. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. In other words, we were no longer in bondage because we could dream again. And then, then he said, then was our mouth filled with laughter. Or somebody say, people that dream will laugh. The joy of the Lord's connected when you can see tomorrow today. If you can't see past now, you'll be the most saddest person that you've ever met. Come on, somebody. Sad people can't see past where they are. But I promise you, if you ever get into the presence of God, he will show you beyond where you are. Jesus faced the cross in Hebrews 12 and 2 and counted it joy that was set before him. How in the world could Jesus count the cross joy that was set before him? I believe this is how, because he looked ahead in time. He looked uh, through the telescope of time. He looked by the Holy Ghost in the same way we can look into the Spirit. Yeah. Come on, somebody, by the Holy Ghost. And I believe he saw me. He saw you. He saw some woman, come on, selling her body on the street corner that he was going to redeem. Uh, he saw some kid about to kill himself, uh, amen, that he was going to appear to uh, and save their soul. Come on, somebody. He saw me and you uh, on our way to hell uh, and thought they're going to call on me. Uh, hallelujah. And then he starts instead of just weeping as he faces the cross he kind of chuckles come on somebody I don't know about you when I'm happy I laugh I, I don't know about you one of the greatest expressions of joy can be tears of joy but some of the greatest expressions of joy is laughing the Bible said in Luke 6 and 21 they that listen to this they that mourn shall laugh somebody say that's part of being joyful laughing if you ain't been joyful lately you ain't looked in the mirror long enough Amen. God's got a sense of humor. Look in the mirror. Take a picture of yourself with your phone. And every time you feel sad, just go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> yeah, y'all remember that? One. Praise God. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Man, they begin to sound with joy. They begin to sing and glorify God. Then said they among the heathen. No, the heathen start saying so. The Lord hath done great things for them. All God had done for them was gave them a dream. <laughs> that meant they were living like everything that they had dreamed about was already done. My Lord. It changed their whole perspective. It that's why you, you've seen saints laying on a hospital bed. You thought you went in there to minister to them, but they prophesied and ministered to you. Come on, somebody. They got a vision. They got a dream. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbors saying it may look like a nightmare before it comes to pass, but hold on to your dream. Stay dreaming possessed. It'll keep you laughing when you're hurting. It'll keep you rejoicing when you're full of sorrow. Come on, somebody. Because you know that's what sorrow will do. It'll, it'll try to interrupt your vision, your dream. Because the Bible said in Job 17, verses 7, Job, and if you can't find the book of Job, look for Job. Um, that's a revelation for somebody. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. But in Job 17, verses 7, Job said his eyes were dim by reason of his sorrow. In other words, his sorrow that was present caused his vision to get dim. To get blurry. We find in John 20 verse 14 through 16. We find Mary you know at the empty tomb of Jesus. And two angels is there. And she's, she's so full of sorrow and crying. And you know if you cry and your eyes is full of tears. It blurs your vision don't it? Hello? When tears is filled up in your eyes. Your eyes get blurry. You can't see clearly. Amen. And this was what was happening. Her grief was blurring literally her vision. Can you imagine two angels sitting there at an empty tomb? Hey Amen. And you're talking with two angels and you're weeping. You're so full of sorrow. You can't even see who it is. Wow. Boy, think about the God we're missing because of our sorrow. Amen. Thank you about it. Hallelujah. And, and, and here, here she is. Hey Amen. And now Jesus walks up and she supposes he's the gardener. He keeps the garden where the tomb is and all that. And where have you laid him? She's asking him the same thing she asked the angels. Where did you lay him? I want to go get him. Where is he at? Where did you put him? Hallelujah. And Jesus finally just called her name out. Hallelujah. And then she just, she immediately knew who he was. 
Praise the Lord God. In other words, amen, as long as she was sorrowing, she couldn't even see the master. She couldn't even recognize him. I'm telling you, God's about to touch somebody in a season of grief. You've walked through sorrow long enough. And I've come to prophesy to you, you may have sown in some tears. I can't even read it. I got, I got four, I can preach it. But Psalms 126 and 5 said, they that sow in tears shall reap with joy. Somebody shout, it's time to see some joy coming. Somebody shout, I see some joy. I know it's been hard. I know it's been grief stricken. I know it's been one pain moment, thing after the other. Hallelujah. But God wants to dry somebody's eye this morning and let you see again. Somebody shout, let it get the sorrow out of your eyes and get some joy back in your vision. Can you dream of joy again? I didn't say genie, but can you dream of some joy again? Somebody shout, it ain't going to stay this way forever. This light affliction, which is for a moment, worketh for me a more exceedingly eternal way of glory. 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Can you see it? Look at your neighbor and kind of tap him and say, can't you see it? Tell him, say, can't you see it? It's going to get better. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Sorrow for the present blurred her vision. Same happened with Job. This is what Job went on to say in Job 17 and 11. Job says, my purposes, that means my dreams, my plans that are future, are broken off. He said, my days are past. My Lord, even the thoughts of my heart. Job was such into a deep place of grief and sorrow. If you hadn't been there, keep breathing. You'll experience puberty one day. Such a deep place of sorrow. He felt like his days were past. In other words, he felt, Brother Young, like his best days were behind him. Man, I'm preaching to somebody this morning. Hello? His purposes, his dreams, his vision of tomorrow was broken off. Somebody say it was broke up. It was broke away. He had broke away from it. He had broke up with it. He couldn't see the future no more. All he could see is how bad it is now. And he thought, man, my best days are behind me. And then he said, the thoughts of my heart. That means the very visions that God has put in my spirit of what he said he was going to do. Uh, friend, right before God does it, it'll look like a nightmare. It won't look like no dream. Uh, come on, church. It, it'll look worse before it gets better. Praise the Lord God. And in those moments, uh, you got to stay dreaming possessed. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Listen what David said. David got like that in 1 Chronicles 27 and 1 when Saul was chasing him. Amen. Glory to God. His enemy, he said, there's nothing better for me. He made that statement. The man of God that God was going to use and say, a man after my own heart. Acts 13 and 22. A man that nobody that preaches or sings, amen, can't go very long without mentioning because from his lowings came the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about David. Yeah. David got to such a low point, a place that even in the word of God in 1 Samuel 22, that he was camped out in a cave of a doula. And all these people, the depressed, and those in debt, Come on, and those that were dissatisfied, amen, all gathered around him. He, he was a leader of these people. You know, you've met them, these people, the D people. Distressed, in despair, agony on me. Come on, somebody. In debt, dissatisfied, poor me. Come on, somebody. That's who he had was these people. Come on. And that's who was kept out in the cave with him. But God sent a prophet in 1 Samuel chapter 22 verses 5. And the prophet told him, you've abode in this cave long enough. Hallelujah. God said, get out of here. And that's what David did. And he went to a place called Judah. Somebody shouted, he got out of the cave and got back in the praise. God had anointed David to praise. God had gifted him to praise. But the devil was trying to take his praise away because all the hell that was being brought forth in his life. Come on, somebody. I've come to call somebody out of a cave this morning. You've sit there and sorrowed long enough. God said, I've anointed you. Glory to God. And your best days is not behind you. They're not in the past. They're in the future. They're ahead of you. Hell ain't fighting you over where you've been. Don't you know by now? Ain't 
that you mature enough in your faith by now to know that hell only fights you over where you headed. Get out that cave and get back into the praise. Look at your neighbor and say, Thou shalt not be a cave man. If it's a woman, say, address her accordingly. Thou shalt not be a cave woman. Somebody shout, Get out the cave and get back into praise. Hear the prophet of God. I've come to bring somebody out of this thing. You've lived low, low enough. Don't you know you're a king's kid? Don't you know greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world? First John 4 and 4. It may look weary. It may look depleted. It may look like it's all over with. But the God that brought you in is the same one that'll bring you through and take you out. Come on, somebody. For I reckon that the present sufferings are not worthy to be compared to the glory that'll be revealed. You know, it's Romans 8, 18. Can't you feel somebody getting out of a cave? I can feel it. Holy. Cool. Hallelujah. Stay in Haggai out too. I'm good.